you know, you know my story. You know I am. <laughs> you know, you know what I do. I, no, look. you know, you know. <laughs> but the so, world, like we, yeah, you know, you know, you know. My story, my story is well documented. I just wanted to know how you how you got down. No, nah, I don't. I, <laughs> okay. I, I, I absolutely. <laughs> Strictly women. Okay, you know okay, understand? okay. That was good. Okay, I, so, I like that. That's cool. But okay, that was good. so people thought you like that, trannies, though. Yeah, that's what I do, bro. That's you what know you me. do. You know what I do. <laughs> that's what I do. It's, it's well documented. But you liking trannies? Do you consider yourself a gay man? I mean, I've I, I've answered that question way back when when mm-hmm. when I got arrested in 2011 and 2013. We got new new people. Yeah, I, I know we got new people. <laughs> I don't. I consider myself. Try sexual. I'll try anything. Okay. Hey, I respect it. <laughs> I respect it. I'll try anything. I respect not anything. It. Not not literally not anything. But the point I'm making is is that I th- the only thing I've done with transsexuals is that I got top head from a transsexual. I've never had never sex. Went, you never. I never in. had. I never penetrated. You never hit a, a nigga. No. <laughs> you you never, never hit a nigga. No. Hit a nigga. <laughs> no. Never. No. You never hit a nigga. No. Okay. Not one time. No. Okay. Never in my life. Okay. Never had. Sexual intercourse with a transsexual. But what? But what? What? What is the like? What is the thing with with with, with transsexuals like? Because it's a man, so it's like I, because this footage, right? It, where it's like this dude tapes you, right? Right. And y'all like haggling over the prices of head, right? So it's like. Well, let me let me let me correct you. Right. It wasn't a dude that taped me. Right. It was a transsexual. Okay. Well, woman. Okay. It's a transsexual. I don't want them. To, I don't want them to get at you. Don't get at me. It was a transsexual woman that I, take me. It was okay. not a man. Okay, I don't understand all this shit. But I'm, I'm telling you. Oh, that's what I'm saying. You, 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 you want to learn from the master? <laughs> you're the fucking master. This is the fucking master. You want to learn from the master? He's the master. So, so, so. Because I don't want tra- you to get, because they will, they will get at you. They will get at me. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't talk, if you don't talk the right terminology. I have a problem. You, you will have problems. Okay, so, so, so a transsexual female tapes you. Basically, ha- haggling over, 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 over head prices and and uh, where to do it at and all this other stuff. Like, so what I'm asking you is that my question is like, do you do you do you prefer that it's a, a man that looks a like man a woman? That, used to be, that looks like a woman or Mano, Mano, Mano. Stop being difficult. <laughs> that's what a transsexual woman is. So that, it's, that, it's, it's a man that's dressed like a woman. Right, but that, is that what you like, though? Yes. <laughs> I already I made that clear. What, it was, what, what, we going, what we going here? You know, I, re- I really respect your honesty. What, what, like, what, I really yeah, respect your Mano, Mano, yes. Mano, Mano, it's Look, been, Mano, listen, it's yeah. been, this has been, ten, do you know when I first got arrested, it was 2011, it's 10 years now, yeah, bro. Yeah, let me tell you something, let me tell you something about yeah. it. 10, let me tell you 10 years. Something. Let me tell you something about that. I heard about that in the world that nobody, no, nobody knew about that. You knew about it before. I, I heard about it before it, it, it popped off. They said, man, Mr. C was out here playing with the boys. I said, the fuck out of here, nigga. Big Daddy Kane. <laughs> B.I.G. We don't play that, right? And they said, yeah, it happened. He got locked up. But it was real hush-hush. And then it happened again when you got locked up. And they said that you was uh, 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 soliciting sex from... Uh, now, let me tell the story correctly. Yeah, I got locked up in 2011. Mm-hmm. And when I got locked up, the confusion was I got locked up, locked up like late March of 2011. So this, this is literally 10 years, almost 10 years to the day when I first got locked up. Mm-hmm. But the news didn't break until April Fool's Day, April 1st, Friday, April 1st of 2011. And I was getting ready to do my show Friday Night Live. You remember when I was on Friday Night High 97? Fact. 8 to That's 10. Fact. And the girl who I used to do the show with, Jay Medina, Jay she, Medina. she showed me a, a, a text and it was like, yo, or something that there was some news coming down. Right. I said to Jay Medina, don't worry about this April Fool's Day joke because it was on April Fool's Day. So I can live with the fact that this April Fool's Day is not true. In my, in my heart, <laughs> in my heart, the heart was palpitating. How did you feel, though? I, I just told you the heart was palpitating, but I'm talking to Jay Medina like, yo, Listen, it's an April Fool's Day joke, and I'm thinking it's going to go away. Mm. By Sunday, April 3rd, Saturday, Sunday, it was spreading like wildfire. So then Ebro, Flex, Funkmaster Flex, Ebro, they hit me up. Yo, are you coming in Monday? Are you coming in to do the throwback at noon? I'm like, I'm coming in. Mm. Because even though I was scared to death, I wasn't that scared to where I'm not going to come into my job the next day. 
You said this about 45 minutes ago. We come from bed Brooklyn. We're a right. different breed. That's right. I'm not running from nothing. So you 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 having a preference for transsexual uh, females. Is that how you say it? You just said it. You just okay. said it. You having a, a preference for transsexual females. Is that something that you notice about yourself early on? No, nah, this came, this started, this started, for me, th- that activity kind of started in 2001. And what happened was, was that I was in a, a long relationship with a woman. Mm-hmm. And me and her broke up. And... It was like a progression thing with me. What it, what it was was that it started off with me going to strip clubs. Mm-hmm. And not, not the strip clubs you go to, the little corny Miamis and all that. No, so I, was, I like, I like. Nah, I was in the, I was, I was in the dirty underground strip underground clubs. Underground joints, right. It's in, different. In Brooklyn. Different, right. different. And, you know what I mean, and all through Brooklyn. I know those joints. Okay. So, I was. Well known in that circuit, tricking all day in that circuit. So it progressed from that, and then me working at Hot ninety seven on a daily basis, right up the street from Hot ninety seven is Christopher Street, where well, all uh, the niggas with dicks. You ain't got to say that, like that. Oh, um, you got to be gays, that extra gays, gays, right? Come on now, because I don't want them to light no, you no, up. No, don't light me up. Don't light me up. All right, Whoa, so don't don't, I, I don't want them to I light want you no up. Smoke. So right up the street from uh, like less than five blocks away from Hot ninety seven is Christopher Street. Right. Where the gays, lesbian, transsexual community, uh, con- uh, they conjugate, okay? Right. So, me going, being at Highlight 97, I would drive there, up there, go- going, you know, doing whatever, going to wherever I needed to go. And I would pass by there. And I started becoming intrigued by seeing the transsexual women on the track, you know, doing what they, you know, what they doing. And, that, and that's how it started for me. You just started getting curious. I started getting curious. So, but it was like once me and my me and my girlfriend ex girlfriend broke up, then it was like a progression thing. It was it came from the stri- stri- strippers tricking on the strippers, tricking on the strippers, and then it was like, well, how can I elevate my high? Okay, let me try this. It's like going from weed to crack. Yeah, and, and, and you know, and, and so that's how, and that's honest to God, that's how I started. So, and- so I've been I started this this started late late two thousand one, early two thousand two. And you never wanted to progress with that, with as far as like just going all the way, like you just. No, said, no, I just want to get top. I, I just it was all about just getting top. That's it. It was never about nothing else. And so, but then I started. Do, now remember, I'm telling you, I started this 2001, 2002. So I didn't. The first time I got exposed was in 2007. See, y'all know of me getting exposed. Right, and, see, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking okay. about a time when nobody knew. When nobody knew. And that's the time and I'm when talking nobody, about. When nobody knew. Um, I, the first time I ever got exposed was 2007 Did by Wendy know, Williams. Got, by Wendy Williams. It? No. I'm, when, Wendy when, Williams. Wendy Williams. Ex- Just talking about it. Right. Mm. On WBLS in New York. Mm. Her and Charlemagne. Mm. Okay, they had a show together on WBLS, the Wendy Williams Experience. Right. And they exposed me. On WBLS, but when they exposed me back in 2007, they never said my name because Wendy. What contra- did they say? I'm gonna tell you. So Wendy contractually could not. When you was back then, that back in that time, you could not say another DJ's name on the air, or you would get sued. So she would say, eh, 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 "Is having sexual activity with transsexuals." Mm. You understand? So that was back in 2007. So, but my dumb ass. <laughs> I'm still thinking I can get away with it That's because what I was gonna go. You know, like. yeah, I'm, I'm still thinking I can get away with it because I'm like, well, she's saying, eh, 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 but you know, and you gotta remember, this is 2007. There's no internet. The internet is not really popping at the time. No social media. Nothing was really, you know. It's just if you heard it, you heard it. If you didn't, you didn't. You got right, it, right? So I felt like I can still get away with doing the illegal activity and not get jammed up or get caught or whatever. So. Fast forward five years later, in twenty, uh, you know, two thousand eleven, that's when I first got arrested. So, but if you just getting head, why not just a woman? That is the that's the question of 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 my life. That's the question of the, uh, that I always ask myself. Um, the only answer I can give you, Mano, it feels better, man. Because it's different. Because it's different. It's like sneaking, I uh, guess. It's like it's not even about the sneaking. Forget about the sneaking. It's not even about that. It's just 
The only answer what? I can give you, bro. A man knows how to please. It's a man. just if, nah. Get if, the fuck out of here. Yo, it's, it's just, like a woman knows how question. to please. You, you asked the question. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> you don't have to agree, but it's like a, get the f- it's like fuck a, a, a woman. Yo, everybody, a woman knows how to please. Everybody in this room. Get the fuck out of here. Everybody in this room is like, yo, what get is the happening? Fuck y'all out knew. Here. Y'all knew we was gonna get to this talk. Y'all knew. Of course we was. Y'all had y'all meeting. Y'all had y'all meeting. Of course we was. I knew y'all was gonna get to it. I wouldn't be. Y'all Listen, just didn't hey, think the kid was gonna open up. No, you you are you a hundred and 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 you a hundred and I and I respect you and I got nothing. But, but that's the, the only thing I can you. tell you, Mayno. The only thing I can say is that so it I, feels I'm better. It's like what it feels better than a woman. Like what? That's the only the thing I can tell better. you. To me, nothing on this earth feels better than a that's woman. That's your opinion. Yeah, that's my opinion. And that's, you have your right for your opinion. Indeed. My opinion get, is you, that's true. My yeah. opinion is that a man might feel better. That not so much a man like a man that looks like a man, but. Okay, a man that looks like a like, woman. It's just it's, it's it's the vision that I have. That's the that's the vision that's within so you me. Would, that, you wouldn't play with a man that looks like a man. You play no, with a man that looks not. like a woman. Absolutely, that's what I'm saying. So why not just a woman? Is it transsexual? So are all transsexuals? Uh, they they have their change. Some do, some don't. Um, I have a question. Well, first, <laughs> my, all right. So you you've never had sexual intercourse. No. with have you ever performed head on a transaction? No. So, okay. That's a right question. No, no, that's, that's, and no, no, I understand. also just want to know, when you, like, knowing that you're doing this and, like, Wendy Williams on the verge of exposing you, was there anything going on in your head, like, one day this might come out? How will I react? The only time that I ever felt that it would really, really come out to where it's like, Mr. C, bong, bong, bong. The only time I really had awareness, because I'm going to keep it funky. I thought I was invincible. Mm. Mm -hmm. The only explanation I can give of why didn't I stop prior to Wendy exposing me when she never said my name is that I thought I was invincible. I didn't think that, I didn't think I can get caught. I didn't think that the transsexual women actually knew who I was. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? I'm just a DJ. I'm not not, not a rapper. I'm just a DJ. But once again, it's me. It was. I thought I was invincible. I underestimated my popularity. I right. underestimated who I really am. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But the only time that I really started to be concerned is when Charlemagne got hired on Power 105. Because right. what did I tell you a couple of minutes ago? Wendy exposed right. me. Who was her co-host? Charlemagne. Charlemagne. That's how I so met Charlemagne. when Charlemagne was getting hired at Power 105 back ten years ago now. That's when I started to be like, homie knows. And he's on another radio so station. And he's on another radio station. And it's the enemy. And it's the enemy. You felt, you felt some kind of way, like, holding this secret, right? Like, do you consider yourself part of, like, the LGBTQ uh, community? What is it? LGB, what? LGBT. Well, I, I mean, I wouldn't say, I'm not going to sit here and say I'm an activist and all of that type of stuff. Right. I wouldn't say that. Right. But I'm not ashamed about who I am and what I what I what I do and what I've been through. That that I'm not gonna because like I said, it's ten years now. Like if anything, I'm if anything, I'm proud to have went through the darkest of the dark of the dark of right. my life. Mm-hmm. And and I'm still here ten still, years later. Still, still indulging? Here. Yes. <laughs> Why not? And that's that's some class, man. He owns his children. <laughs> Get that man his flowers now. For being who he say he is, he's still indulging. Still but like that's what men you that look like women. It because Definitely. when you hide it is when you get the most scrutiny. See, the, if I, I say, "Look, this is who I am," or you, you could either you could either like it or not. But you gotta respect it because I'm finding my truth. You can't. There's nothing you. If I'm okay with who I am, there's nothing that you can say that can can make me feel any type of way. Or and if I had, and if, if I had the strength now that I did. Back in 2011 when I first got arrested, back in 2013, the second time I got arrested, if I had the strength I did now than I did back then, nobody but nobody on this planet would have been able to use what they had against me, against me. But I don't feel like it, it was a big thing against no, you. No, bro. You, do was. you understand how crazy? Know. But you got caught in a, like, a mook area. Like, you got caught. Hey, 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 you got to po- po- watch your language. Oh, okay. You got caught in the area that's like predominantly. No, I did not. No, I did not. You got caught. No, you was on on Bedford. You was on on Broadway. 
Oh yeah, the second time. The second yeah, time. Bedford, uh, bro, bro, like, Broadway and Madison. Yeah. That's like hot yeah, yeah. Uh, really? activity. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I it was that's in East New York. That area over there is like a high right. traffic area right. for uh, transsexuals and stuff like right. that. Like, so when when I heard about it, I was like, "What the fuck he was doing over there? What, <laughs> what he doing over there, bro? I be knowing. Over there. I, be, yeah. I be knowing." This shit got to be true. He but over how do you know that but, 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 it's, it's but, hot? That's because that's the area you know you drive by. Why are you so aggressive? You ain't got that. No, you, Why are you so aggressive? <laughs> He's mad aggressive when I ask That's the question. area that you know that you keep going. You look straight. But, but, bro, straight. but bro, but bro, but bro, straight, if you, if I, drive straight. If you, in, if you enthralled in it the, the way I was heavily enthralled in it uh, with the illegal activity from it, you're going to know where to go. You're going to know where to go. You know so, 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 so at the end of the day, like, you know, when I first got arrested in 2011, I denied it. At 2013, when I got arrested the second time, the person who really put me over the top and was just like, yo, bro, it's over, was Flex. What Flex was, Flex basically was like, yo, you got to, it's, it's over, bro. You got to, you got to, if it wasn't for. Gotta own it. You, if it wasn't for Flex and Ebro, I give those two guys so much credit for putting me over the top to deal with you know, to, for, to face my fears, mm. because they they was th- those two men right there was like, yo, bro, you we will be here for you every step of the way of whatever you need to be it to be done. But the first things first, you got to own up to it. If you don't own up to it, it's never it's gonna this is gonna be a forever thing. So I'm Once. eternally I'm eternally thankful to Flex. Can we get a, a round of applause for Flex and Ebro? Shout out to Flex. Shout out to Ebro. So I, I'm eternally grateful to them and a lot of people. They'll try to say some slick t- shit to me on the side, like they only use you because you was you was working with them, and I, it. Whether you feel like somebody is using somebody or not, somebody don't have to come to you at all with no guidance. You understand what I'm saying? Somebody don't have to come to you and tell you nothing about how to help you navigate your darkness. But the fact that they did. Regardless of what their intent was, I feel like their intent was a, good, a great intent. Indeed. But you got people that be in my ear that say, "Nah, it wasn't a great intent." But no matter what it was, they did way more for me than what Indeed. most you felt anybody. like. You felt like that that had like a, ne- a negative connotation on your legacy because you being who you are. Um, do you feel like you know people trying to uh, pigeonhole you, put you in, in a gay category? Uh, I mean, all the time, all the time. To this day, like some of the most some of the most famous DJs. Some of your most famous, legendary, iconic DJs will hate on me. Go to promoter. If they see I'm getting booked for a party, they go to the promoter. Why you booked the gay guy? What? To this day. Wow. Why you booked the gay guy? It happens to this day. But do you still get bitches? Girls, women? Yeah. Absolutely. I just had to say it in that way. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> you know, I, there's, there's women that, that. They don't care. They don't care. There you go. So you let him know that you do. He this. was there. They for, know. He was there for they like two, two seconds. Yeah. Ago, he was like, "There's hey, women they, they, with they, a smile." They know. Like, they know. What, as long as you let them know that, you know what, what, that you do niggas they know. too. How is it? How is it that they don't know? They know. Right. So, so yo, it's the, my life. My life is to the point where I don't push up on a woman. Because mm. now my thing is, you know my story. <laughs> 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 mm. So I don't push up on a woman because you know my story. So if you, if you me, coming up to me and talking to me, you know, you know, they know, they know. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't do what you do. Oh, and what is it that I do? I don't try to, I don't try to talk to women. I don't do that. Yo, I don't do that. All the women love me. Your, your because it's like, they all love me. You're not, I, I have to, I have to be that way. Because I don't want to be, Love I don't want to be, and this is something that I had to learn throughout the years. Don't get it messed up. I had to learn throughout the years that I can't be the aggressor because that can either turn a woman off because they already know my story, or they, you know, they, uh, the, the, uh, the, the gay guy, the dirty guy, whatever. So my thing is, all right, I'll sit back. And I find that sitting back actually works. Because women get stressed all the time by dudes talking to them anyway. Mm. Women so like, when you sit back. A lot of women like the laid back guy. Maybe what it is. As long as they know. So, but, but th- 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 this conversation started off about why did I leave Hot 97. Right. So I want to kind of go back to that. Because people th- think that I left Hot 97 because of what I went through personally. That's what I thought. I never, that's not why I left. I left Hot 97 because um, I knew. At the time when I left, November 
of 2014, I knew that the station was going in a direction where they was getting ready to bring in new talent. Mm -hmm. And before you could tap me on the shoulder and be like, your time is up. Or before they can tap me on the shoulder and be like, ah, we're going to make you once a week now. Mm. Before it get to that, like what Jay-Z said, I don't get dropped. I dropped the label. Right. Let me break out. Well, I get fired and that's what happened. It had nothing to do with my personal life. It all happened to do with what I foresee, I, I, what I was foreseeing getting ready to happen with the station. They was bringing in new blood. So my thing is, is like, eventually, if you've been working in corporate America long enough, you know what's getting ready to happen. But it, it's about to be a, a, a big And I don't know if that's what's going to happen. But my thing but was, you didn't, you didn't let me, let like me none exit. Of, none of your personal relationship was was at at, at jeopardy. No, because they would have got rid of me when I first got arrested in 2011. They would have got rid of me in 2013. I left in 2014. But nothing was going on with me then when I left. I, I left. I went on the station November 21st, 2014. You can pull it up. And I got on the throwback at noon. And I Remember said, that. I'm resigned. This is my last show. Nobody, nobody in the building knew I was leaving. Nobody. Wow. Nobody. Wow. And, and the, other the, is, the, other thing, the other thing, too, is the other thing, the other thing, too, the other thing, too, main is that. I always felt that I didn't want to be at Hot 97 at 50 years old. Mm. And I was 48 when I left. Mm. I always felt like, it's, this is no offense to anybody that's on a hip-hop radio station past 50, but I always felt like I did not want to be on Hot 97 past 50. I used to have conversations with Flex. Bro, I don't want to be here at 50. And Flex used to be like, come on, we're going to ride this out. We're going to ride this out. I'm like, Ever. yo, I don't want to be here past 50. So mm. that was always in my mind too. But So the combination of that and then the new talent that was coming in, I was like, before you tap me on that shoulder, let me break out. Wow. wow. And wow. was I scared to death when I left? I was scared as shit. But I didn't, because I didn't have a plan. I had no plan of what I was going to do. But you bounced back, bro. And you're still here. And, and it's really, you know, sometimes we, we brag too much about where we come from. But where we come from means everything. Stop and if, shit. And if I, if I didn't have that upbringing of coming from LG, from coming from Lafayette, 411. 411. 411. If I didn't have that upbringing, Lafayette if I didn't Avenue. have my brothers, my brothers that I, my little, my little big brothers, seeing my brother, like my brother Knowledge, rest in peace, my Shout brother out. Babe D. Rest in peace Knowledge, man, was a, was a legendary street nigga. Um, <laughs> and so, so one seeing, one my, niggas, seeing, my, seeing my two brothers, seeing my, and they're up. younger than me, but definitely. seeing them in the trenches, like seeing that, definitely. I could never, I could never Mano let them down. I could never be a person to let them down and be like, oh, I'm going to be down in the dumps. And, and the other thing, too, is if I was a whack DJ, I would have been finished. The only thing that saved me is my talent. Mm. Because if I was a whack DJ and I got jammed up, I would have been wrapped because, up. Because at the end of the day, that's all it comes down to. The talent is going to override you, what, everything. What you do in your personal life is your business. Right. And, would you, so, and these are all things I had to learn with therapy. Because right. I did. I went to therapy. Like, all the stuff. Like, nothing can override... You being honest, nothing can override what you bring to the table as a man, as what you do for your, your living. You're going to have obstacles. People are going to block you. Mm. People try to block me to this day. I just told you. Mm. Some of your most famous DJs. Wow. Yo, why you booked the gay guy? And they wow. think the promoter not going to tell me. Stupid. Of course the promoter going to tell me what you said. Mm. But guess what? I'll see them and shake their hand. Well, like th They don't even know the, what I know about them. Thick face, black heart. So the biggest thing, the biggest thing that I went through in that two-year time period is the mental strategy that you have to have to deal with the type of people that we deal with in this industry. It just made me become even more stronger, even better, even more uh, uh, accessible. And that's the other thing about, you said earlier about how I used to be an asshole. Right. Part of why I was an asshole, too, back in that time and my heyday of High 97 is because I was guarded. So I'm going to put up the asshole shit. Don't get next to me. Ah, ah, ah. I used to always. Ah. That, was, that was the mechanism. That was the defense mechanism because I didn't want people to really get to know who I really was. And who are you? I'm a free man. I'm a free guy. I'm a free man. I'm a, you know what I mean? Like totally, uh, totally free. inhibited. You know what I mean? Free person. Tri what is it? Trisexual? Try anything. Try anything. I, I won't try anything. But you know, the point is, is that you know, you do what you want to do. I do what I want to do, and if you either you like it or you don't, and you accept me or you don't accept me, that's it. Bottom line. Yeah, it is. It is respectable, bro. And I wanna, 
I, listen, I got I got I, I got a lot of respect for you. I already came to the game with respect for you, but I I didn't gain a lot more respect for you since you've been here, bro. And I appreciate you coming here, coming to the crib, vibing, talking, telling your story, and speaking your truth the way you did, bro. Like I got a lot of love for it's you. Nothing. Bro. It's it's at the end for of real. the day, man. Like, it's nothing nobody can't do. It's nothing you can do against me. There's nothing you can do. You just better be worried about what I can do to you. That's right. And you own who you because are. at the end of the day, it's like, you. there's people out here that hide way more shit than what I was hiding. So if mm. that's all you got on me, mm. try again. Wow. That's it. Wow. Wow. And you, and you heard that, ladies and gentlemen, people out there in TV land. You already nice. know what it is, man. Face your fears, man. Face your fears. I'll tell everybody, I'm looking at this, this the main ca- let me yeah. tell you something, man. Face your fears. You know, we all go through the fear of the unknown. Wow. But if you don't face your fear and, and, and walk through it, like I had to walk through it. I had to drink a bunch of, 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 of Fanta orange sodas and almost, <laughs> bro, I almost went blind. Wow. Back from like 2011 to 2012 because I used to just run home from the throwback at noon and drink a bunch of Fanta orange sodas because... In, in, in the public eye, I'm doing the throwback at noon. I'm doing all these parties. In the public eye, I'm still out there. But at, back at home, I'm in misery. You're going through it. You're going through it. But I needed to go through the darkness. I needed to go through that shit and, and listen, you to get, get out of it. Listen, you can't, see the, you can't see the stars shine without the darkness. You can't. You understand? So the darkness, the darkness has to be for, in order for you to see the, the stars to shine. So it is what it is. You heard it here first, man. Shout out to Halal, bro. Shout out to Mr. C. We're pulling up, man, on episode, what's this, 35? 35, man. Man, we here, bro. You lit, man. you lit. 35. I'm, we super lit, man. It's Kitchen Talk, man. At your favorite Thank time, you. boy. You know, at your favorite time, boy. You know, holla, get better. Ricky, you'll yes. be back. And uh, Mr. C, brother, thank you, bro. Thank you so I appreciate much. Y'all. Appreciate, yep. y'all. appreciate y'all. Appreciate y'all. Appreciate you. We're going to break some bread, bro. A little bit. Hey, yo. Monday, you come, you come through. Monday through Friday, check me out on LL Cool J's Rock the Bells Radio, Sirius XM Channel 43, right. Monday through Friday, right. 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. East Coast time. Um, I, do a sh- I do a show called The Set It Off Show, classic hip-hop from the 80s, 90s, and 2000s. Monday through Friday, 7 to 9 p.m., and then every Saturday I'm on 2 to 4 p.m. LL Cool J's Rock the Bells Radio, Sirius XM Channel 43. And look, when you talk about People give people giving you opportunities. Look what, what look what this man LL done gave me. Look at the opportunity Whoa. that he done gave me. Shout out to LL, man. So you know what I mean. Still out here. So that's what it is, man. Jesus Christ. Take, what the fuck? Chase that, bro. Chase that, bro. I'm gonna break, get to it. Break, I'm gonna get chase. to it. Break bread, break, break chase with me, man. Your break dreams. bread with me, man. Chase your dreams. I'm chase your dreams. You, you already know it. You already know how we moving. Chase your dreams. You already know what it is. Go after what you're looking for, man. You know what I mean. Ain't no perfect moment. Make the moment perfect. Let's get it.